Benji's, welcome to the Binge Worthy Podcast, part of the Geekish Network. My name is Randy, and as you can see, we got a full house tonight. Starting off, you know him as Noop from the Ville. Rakai, people know who you are, son. Hello, governor. <laughs> Love it. Yo, Chuck, tell the people who you are, son. What it do, people, what it do. <laughs> Excited for today's conversation. <laughs> And Catherine, please tell the people who you are, ma'am. Hello, and happy <laughs> Win- w- Odin's Day. Yes. Happy Odin's Day, <laughs> happy ma'am. Odin's Day, <laughs> and yo, you know this guy, he, you know, he's a stranger, he's not a stranger, he leaves, he comes back, but you know, he's family. What's up, Sintel? Let the people know who you are, son. Hey, I'm over here chilling like I'm on Jet Magazine, baby. What's going down? <laughs> oh, Miss Celia <laughs> home now. Miss Celia home. <laughs> and we Look, are all the, the people out there like Jet Magazine. What is that? <laughs> I know. <Jet> Magazine. <laughs> I know. Wait, I know. Do they still make Jet Magazine anymore? They don't. That, oh. They make it's an online yeah. property. It's they online don't make property. the actual pages anymore. Oh, they should Man, it wasn't that. nothing like going to the mail and getting that Jet Magazine, boy. boy. The Jet it wasn't, nothing like go- yeah. it wasn't nothing like going to my cousin's house and having all those centerfolds on his walls. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're going to a beauty salon or hair place and they had Jet Magazine. Yeah, yeah. Jet yeah. Like, yeah. It was- yeah. and Word Up. Yeah. Talking about Word, word Up and oh, the Word source. Up oh. or the source and the, the source. vibe coming in the mail. Vibe oh, coming in the mail. Me, oh, Chuck, and Theo would be fighting them. Theo would be like, don't y'all open my vibe till I get home. He'd be like, you can say whatever you want to say, player. <laughs> this is getting open. <laughs> we going to take that L. That's cool. That's cool. But just say whatever you need to say, player. <laughs> Ready from cover to cover. Cover to cover. <laughs> cover to cover. He get mad. <laughs> Shouts out to Theo. All right, and we are the Binge Worthy Podcast. The premise of our show is that we will binge watch a television series to let you know if you should. And tonight, we are reviewing Amazon Prime's Invincible Season 2. And it has eight episodes with a runtime of about 55 minutes. I actually thought it was 30. I think Chuck did that tell you it was 30. No, nah, that's almost an hour for the runtime. All right. Per so episode? The, huh? Per episode. Runtime. Oh, for, they went fast. Runtime mm-hmm. is about 52 minutes per episode. Oh, wow. I yeah. did that in one afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. I don't oh, remember wow. being that, that, that long. I didn't either. I didn't think it was, but when I looked at the actual times, yeah, look it up. The time That's also 52. a testament to maybe you were enjoying yourself. You know what they yeah. say. Time moves fast yeah. when you have Absolutely. Fun. Mm-hmm. They also had that breakup in like episodes too, so that might also affect like, hey, I want more. <laughs> I didn't have that breakup. I watched it all on Sunday. Oh, that's smart. Wow. Oh. <laughs> all right. Now, the premise of Invincible Ed 2 is after an earth-shattering betrayal, Mark tries to get his life back on track as he makes new adversaries and allies, all while trying to suppress his greatest fear that he may become his father. And what we do at the our show is at the beginning, we will rate it using our binge-worthy scale, and then we engage in discussion, and we re-rate it at the end. Nobody knows what everybody rated other than our technical director, Rodney. Rodney, please, let us know how the binge-worthy crew rated Invincible Season 2. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. I like it. I like it. So we got three binge worthies. And then we got two full meals. Okay. All right. Let me chill myself. That's a 4.6, so we can round that on up to a full binge out. So thus far, we got a full binge out for uh, Invincible Season 1. So um, let's talk about this, guys and, and ladies. I don't want to be sexy. Uh, <laughs> so I want to start off first just asking, has anybody read the comics? I still, I'm okay. still okay. reading it. Okay. I, it was, yeah. So I'll start with you, Sintel. Uh, What's up? Uh, would fans of the comic be fans of the series? Uh, yes, I will say that overall, I think they'll be happy. Of course, you know, people that that are purists, be it regular books or graphic novels, uh, they're they're going to be upset that certain key moments are going to be left out. It's just impossible to do it, you know, bar for bar, panel for panel. But I think if you're talking about just the overall gist of the book, yeah, because the, the tone is what's being maintained uh, and, and the feeling that you have regarding the characters is being maintained. And I think as long as you, you can do those two, it gives you a lot of leeway, even enough leeway to split a season in two and get some forgiveness. And we, we're going to talk about that in <laughs> just a couple minutes. So, uh, Rakai, what about you, sir? Uh, you read the comics. Do you think fans of the comics would enjoy the animated series that we watched on Amazon Prime? No, my my answer is kind of in two-part. Um, only because, yes, I think that anyone who read the uh, comics, the graphic novels, would absolutely love what they're doing with it. And from what I understand... Uh, Robert Kirkman is heavily involved with the show uh, as well to make sure that it's, you know, going to his vision. I started reading the uh, Invincible comics. And so where they're at now, the story that they're telling um, on the TV show now, I didn't make it that far. It's just one of those things. It held my interest. But at that time, when I was still reading comics, one of the reasons why I don't read comics now is because so many new comics came out every week and it just became overwhelming. Life took over and I didn't have enough time or I didn't make enough time to read all the comics that came out every week. So, and that was just one of the ones that fell by the wayside. So, okay, that's good stuff. Uh, Sintel, you said it won't go panel for panel, but isn't that a good thing? Haven't we kind of talked about how series and shows don't necessarily have to adapt 100% of the source material? Yeah, I, I think it is a really good thing because it's one thing to make sure you pay proper homage to your OGs, your original fans, and it's another thing to kind of keep the story moving. Um, I think you can get, you know, too caught up in, in, in nostalgia and miss things altogether. I mean, a perfect example is like Ghostbusters, uh, Frozen Empire that just came out. They were so steeped in, in staying true to the cool little Easter eggs that they forgot all about the story um, um, all, all together. Uh, so, you know, tone and characters, like I said before, are so... Are, are, are so uh, important and 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 um, crucial in, in order to keep people invested. And then not only that, let me let me jump in here for just a second, Randy. Uh, and sometimes when you go panel for panel and you stay too tight, people don't enjoy that, and they think that they want that. But when you take no liberties with it, um, and you're not again paying homage, staying true to it, uh, the original Watchmen movie by Zack Snyder. He damn near went panel for panel. Like he stayed really true to it because he he was really kind of afraid to mess it up. And him staying so tight to it, he did nothing with it. And it was really lackluster. Um, and then you have people like the Netflix adaptation of uh, uh, Avatar, The Last Airbender. And even where we said that that was excellent, um, a lot of people were like, no, you should go panel for panel with the original animated show to give us what we want. And that's, that was really not even feasible. It wasn't possible, you know? So sometimes you have to stay true to the spirit and maybe even sometimes go completely off the rails. Cause just like I talked about the Watchmen movie, the Watchmen TV show was amazing. And oh. that was nothing like the no. Watchmen, yeah. nothing like it at all. It was amazing. Yeah. I don't, I would still argue like Zack Snyder kind of shot the, 
parts of the Watchmen a little bit differently that kind of changed some meanings from the panels. But I mean, also know that's like translation as well as his like style and and like shooting things too. But yeah, he uh, did. He tried to shoot it like like he shot the three hundred, and he thought that the the way that he shot was the magic, you know. And it's just a lot of directors get caught up in that, and they're, they're constantly trying to catch lightning in a bottle. Mm -hmm. Why does my screen look like he's got thing. lightning on? Yeah. Let's let, 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 yeah, let's focus on <laughs> Invincible. So, uh, Chuck, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna transition over to you real quick. Uh, season one of Invincible, it came out in March of 2021. It did not come back into November of 2023. That was the first part, and then March of 2024. So, my question to Bro. you was: Was the wait worth it, and why? Well, for me, I didn't see. I was, you know. I'm a true binger, so the after the first season, I was excited about it, and I thought the wait was long, and I just watched it, and I thought it was worth the wait. I think I think they did a really good job in season two. Uh, I think they they tightened up on the animation. They did a lot of smart things in this show that had me on the floor laughing, such as I think it was episode six or seven. When he talked about how they make animation, yeah, that was they funny. Do it, that was cool. And how they do it on the budget, like yeah. I, I can, I can see uh, Kirkman come in and say, "Hold on, people don't they think this stuff is really easy, and it's not." And he sat there for seven minutes and gave almost a master class in story on how animation is made. And I'm thinking, and the way he described it, he described it in a very a television animation way and a mm -hmm. very anime animation way and not a Disney animation way or a Ghibli animation way where they, they try to, they try to animate as much as they possibly can. Yeah. They're not about doing it cheap. They're about spectacle of animation to sell them. Mm -hmm. That was, was really slick the way they described yeah. it at the, at Comic-Con and just described at the Comic -Con. animation pro yeah. process. Yeah. I know the comic also does like a reference like that too. They have um like how they do comics and it's a similar kind of insider joke with like now this is with animation and this the comic was with comics and I thought yeah I liked all the mm -hmm. references and everything like recover our mouth. I was gonna ask if they did that in the comic book. I was gonna ask. Mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. do it in there for this. Oh, so they actually do it in the yeah. comic? Yeah. 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 The, the the comic is very self aware. Uh, especially Robert Kirkman, he even makes fun of his own projects. Because in case you didn't know, Kirkman is also one of the writers of, is also the creator of The Walking Dead. Walking um, Dead. And you'll see like some really cheap references uh, in in Invincible that talk about that as well. You see it in the animated in this animated series as well, when he kind of pokes pokes fun of the industry, where there's a moment where he's making fun of Batman, another one he's making fun of of Spider Man mm -hmm. as well. So it's 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 very like very very aware of itself in some of yeah. the, the little idiosyncrasies that 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 makes the uh, uh, the the business um, interesting to deep dive with. Yeah, and that's a, a another reason why that's another reason why Robert Kirkman is so closely involved with this as well. Um, just because you know how Walking Dead started out good and then it went completely off the rails and then they. You know, because they wanted to turn into a cash cow, so they mm -hmm. dropping spinoffs here and spinoffs there, and just creating their own stuff. And he's like, "No, we're not doing that with this." So he's really closely involved, so it stays true to the story that he wrote. And Invincible, if we think about it, isn't it satire? Yeah, it can it be. Is. Yes, I think yeah. it is. I mean, you know. I guess he's making fun a satire of the the comic book industry, right? Or superheroes in mm -hmm. general. <laughs> and then we had satire on top of that. So I just kind of never really thought about it, but like it's satire. Hmm. I guess I like Arch definitely satire on DC comics for sure. Huh? <laughs> well, I mean, they did Spider Man in 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 this. Yeah, season. they did do Spider Man. Doctor Octavius, I mean, the but, old but... man. But he also yeah. did Batman. The did Batman. ridiculous yeah. ass Batman. Yeah. That was a we, great see, scene. See, Rakai just trying to start yeah. stuff, and I, I ain't falling for <laughs> so, uh, it. I ain't falling, falling for Batman? it. Nope, I'm going to move on. Catherine. For <laughs> 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 this season, we got it divided into two halves, maybe for animation purposes or whatever. Uh, You think this was a good decision to divide it into two halves? Did it interrupt the flow or anything what are your thoughts on it being divided i i kind of wish they just waited to have them together because it did kind of disrupt the flow for me where i'm like i, I definitely want more towards the end but 
it was a weird like it's like if you're watching a movie and you stop and you wait a few months and then you go back to watch a movie again it was that same feeling um you mean like rebel moon <laughs> no, 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 not like Rebel Moon. Not like Rebel Moon because Invincible Season One was good. <laughs> that, part. that part. Yeah. So I'm not saying like, Rebel Moon is bad. It's just not. Good. It's just not it's good. An okay. taste. It's just an acquired taste, right? Yeah, like yeah, sardines. Finish your thought, please. Y'all just finish your thought, man. Go ahead, Captain. Sorry about that. But I'd rather like the whole season, like, you know, wait, get that appetite going. Also probably advertise it a little bit better than they have. I feel like it's like season one came out and then like silence and then season two or this, sorry, two, whatever, 2.5, whatever we're at, the other half came out. And I'm concerned about the viewership count due to that because I want to see another season. I'm hoping it's been greenlit already. It has. Okay, good. Cool. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. they okay, can yeah. utilize that time in between like... You know getting near or a few months before release to amp it up and have like a huge like audience watch yeah. with it all let, together. let me uh, let me throw this out there before we move on randy just because right, i want i'm interested what bryce says you know we've gotten so used to the netflix model of doing things where i mean you know this show is binge worthy you binge everything mm -hmm. what do we think about especially something a property like this invincible being serialized where it's a weekly you know, back to it's like a throwback to old school, the way we used to watch TV. What do you think about that? Oh, it was because I'm I'm like like I'm like chucking like what Catherine just said. I would have rather had if you're gonna give me eight episodes, give me all yeah, eight yeah. episodes oh, so I can I get it in. Yeah. But I I think uh, let me jump in real quick and, and take a stab at it. I think um it's it's two things, Catherine. You brought up uh, marketing, right? That it didn't have enough marketing. Um, even though I didn't see hardly any advertisements. Uh, as compared to other projects that that Amazon has, has brought forth, my social media was packed mm. with Invincible. Packed. Everybody was watching it. And instead of it being like a one shot done kind of thing where you put all the episodes out at the same time, the Internet kind of goes crazy for a couple of days and kind of fades away. Uh, it was an entire month of Invincible constantly being on my feed. So where they may have saved some money with the marketing machine, you know, it had a, it had a really strong groundswell, at least from my echo chamber. Um, and it seemingly had a really big groundswell from social media. Hmm. I was good with Cause the they did both halves of the season. Yeah. yeah. I was good with the serialized. I wish they wouldn't have broke it up. We wouldn't have had yeah. that long gap between episode four and episode five. Yeah. That kind of, I guess really it's like it a little bit to me. I agree at the part, Part one, part two is the main problem I'm having. Cause like I, I was watching it every like you know, episode came out. I have to wait a week, but like having it broken up is what really bothered mm -hmm. me the most. I mean, it could have been Attack on Titan, so you know. <laughs> wait, what? What? What's going on with Attack on Titan? All uh, they split how they made you wait for the last yeah, three they, episodes. They, they, yeah. Told you three different times that this is the season finale and it really wasn't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, no. the series finale. Yeah. This is it. And it like, ah, no, we no, got another one. Not. <laughs> no. So, so, Chuck, you talked about it a little bit. You said uh, there were some changes in the quality of the animation. Uh, can you speak to some of those uh, yeah. changes? Uh, they, they put a bigger bag towards it. You first noticed it when I first noticed it was in Invincible Adam Eve, right? Because I saw the animation, how they're taking their shots in the first season. Really great show. Done it really well. I, I was like, oh, this is a very anime style of things where they know conversations behind the head, blah, 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 lips not moving, things over the face. We did a really good job. Then Adam Eve, when 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 Invincible Adam Eve came out, the, the prequel to season two about Eve coming to, to her powers, I was like, wow, they are really trying to push the animation up. And then I saw this, it's just like, well, the programmers got better, the programs got better, and plus the artists got better. And it just it just looks better. It just flows a lot better. The shots are even better. The, the directing is overall better. So the animation was really well done, I think, in season two in comparison to season one. It's the subtle things. It's the small things you see. Hmm. Did and anybody Grant, else see anything crisp, new in season two and in the quality of the animation against uh, season one? Um, I like the the incorporation of music. There were some really cool moments when Mark was flying and they incorporated some music that kind of like mm. did some really good things with the tone. Um, I don't remember seeing that in 
in season one. Maybe it was. Um, I, I'll lean on y'all or in, in the chat to correct me on that. But to me, it seemed like, okay, you took this break, but you didn't skimp on the quality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, can I ask Catherine that question too, Randy? Because she's the resident artist. Okay, yeah, Catherine. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Catherine, what do you think of the art style and artwork and animation? You're the resident artist. <laughs> I'm just a producer that looks at art all day long. You're yeah. an actual artist. Uh, I, I really like Invincible's like character design style and just mm -hmm. aesthetic. And yeah, I definitely agree. Like the animation quality uh, did get better, and like even just the gore. I'm not, I'm not like gore, but the the <laughs> the no, gore. No, I <laughs> The gore is much more intensified, with especially with the sound design and like utilizing those pieces and making moments much more traumatic. I think things were felt much more tense this season, especially with the animation, with the shots they had, and what you're saying with the tightness and everything. And and like you can definitely see elements where like you know, of course, like the TV and stuff, you are gonna still cut corners, and you can see some elements of that. But yeah, overall, I think it's it's a great looking show um like the angularity and design sense like that sorry i'm not gonna yeah. like awkwardly ramble but yeah <laughs> yeah i i think one of the best things to show the animation style really well is when duplicate when duplicate dies spoiler mm. alert anybody in the chat that hasn't seen it <laughs> duplicate dies on screen mm -hmm. allegedly and uh and the way how she fought in that when she was fighting and how she was fighting and how he was fighting back. That close combat was really cool. Yeah, and that like the Komodo dragon sequence mm -hmm. where <laughs> that that was uh <laughs> um I don't uh, know, that makes you think twice on like you know, trying to get big in someone's body and it, it yeah. failing. That was, was interesting. That was, that was the whole Thanos question that had been rattling for like the past <laughs> six, seven years after after Endgame came out, it was like, well, why didn't he just shrink and go in Thanos and rah, you know, that thing. And then Invincible was like, well, let's see how that can go wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not going to end yeah. well. Yeah. He got to no. expand. He snapped her in his neck. Oh, yeah, like, right nah. there. Uh, Is that like... Bust, busting out of this. I guess I'm, just, I'm trying to, maybe I'm overthinking like the logistics of that. Like, you know, someone's getting bigger inside your body. Is it like, can your muscles... I guess that's more of a lizard. Ba I mean, they are lizard supers, but is that more mm -hmm. of like an animal or could humans like superhumans potentially, I guess, push their muscles and their organs and kill someone in from the inside? Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, because oh, the, the, the thought the thought with uh, many superheroes is, you know, like those that control um, things like, you know, Magneto could pull all the metal out of people and, you know, pull all the metal out of your blood and things like that. And you know, and those that control like air and stuff could, you know, burst air bubbles inside of your body or whatever. And the thought has been for a long time that someone like uh, even we saw like the Ant-Man shrink down to, you know, to atom size or whatever when he went to the um, to the quantum, quantum world. world the first time that, you know, just imagine him shrinking that small and getting in your brain and then growing just a little bit. I mean, it you know blow your brain up or whatever so the thought has been that super you know superheroes with those type of powers could do some diabolical stuff if they took it there um i, I did think that was interesting of how that ended up working out uh for him i don't i don't know that was that was kind always of is always crazy. Best shrinking like oh sorry I'm just yeah <laughs> i was just that thinking of... yeah that's a dope when she went in one ear and came out the other yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we saw her kill us kill somebody that way too yeah. so yeah. Yeah. yeah i guess i guess it's more of like the person the person in the body and the super with pushing the small person in the body like that working not so much like yeah, yeah. they get bigger they blow up but it, on the when it fails like how does that work from like a super like i guess I guess, more I, guess it, I guess it would depend on whatever kind of powers the whoever she's whoever they're facing has like i i really don't know what the extent of that komodo dragon dude's powers even are so and oh. plus you know he's not it's not like you're fighting another human he's fighting dragon dude which i, I don't and know and that's how i got it well i don't like know if you strong yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if you've ever seen like wildlife films where they talk about Komodo dragons and how they can eat something like a third of their weight. Like they'll they'll eat an entire goat that's like damn near half its size uh, and suffocate it, you know, and I think like like pythons 
I think many reptiles are like that. When, wow. when they, I don't, I don't know if pythons mm -hmm. still constrict. Yeah, no, pythons, them. pythons. Yeah. yeah, usually if they can, depending on the size of it, they'll constrict it first and then swallow it whole. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if it's still wriggling, if it still didn't get our way crushed or whatever, like when you see a, a huge python or something like that, eat a uh, like an alligator. Mm -hmm. They'll constrict it while it's going down, Ugh. you know, to make room for it. Yeah. So, yep. if the Komodo dragon is like that because it's of yeah. the reptile family <laughs> or whatever the hell, then yeah, that's very. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking yeah. it was more like the reptilian side. Like I think mm -hmm. I saw this Komodo dragon just, just quickly, like the fastest. Uh, I think I've eat, seen a lizard eat a thing was just it just ate a deer in like a second and it was gone. It was like alive and. Then eaten dead you know, you know what shocked me is that she didn't shrink and just rip through his brain yeah trauma i figured <laughs> she probably wouldn't even grow. thinking that yeah <laughs> did, so let's let's talk uh so dark uh, nom just said are we overthinking this yeah i think we are we are we are we're trying to totally nerdy that's why i'm trying to push it a little further trying to push it a little further on we we've hey, on we, that for like we, five minutes. We, yeah. we did a good job though, because you know what I'm saying? Somebody could have been like, well, uh, no, uh, according to the science and yeah. so we, we, we yeah. did okay. We totally we did, did okay. That. Yeah. That's not geeking out, you guys. That's nerding out. Yeah. Yeah. That's the difference. We nerded out. So, so, yeah. Like Catherine talked about the gruesomeness uh a little bit. So um you once said that in every series, the choreography, the fight choreography should tell a story. It should tell a story, and that's what helps. What story did we get from the fight choreography in this season? Well, if I we got think, any. I think I think the epitome. There, there's one scene in particular that really tells a story completely, uh, and and let's start with the very beginning, um, and that's when Mark is fighting his dad. One of the most memed moments in uh, in Invincible is um, his dad really just going to work on him, just yah bop bop, and you see his blood splashing all over the place, and it's yeah. like, oh my gosh. We saw that again, almost yeah. frame for frame, beat for beat, when Mark is putting in work on Angstrom Levy. His dad lost his ish completely and was about to beat his son to death. And we see him embody his father in that exact same moment, in that exact same rage, in the exact same fight. The same pose. Yeah. Yeah. Same pose. Yeah. And, and and everything. I think that to me is a testament of just some of the fighting that goes on as as a whole. I mean, the very first episode, I'll say one more quick thing. The very first episode of the of the second part of the second season starts off with a bang. You know, it, everybody is fighting the the Cobra, the Cobra Commander League or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And you can just see like the <laughs> bit of the brew. You get to see the bit of the brutality, which is also a bit of a hat tip to how the very first episode of the first season starts off. You know, and you see Mark's dad absolutely annihilate the Justice League, Guardians of the Globe, whatever the hell you want to call them. Um, so it's 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 the fight scenes may not necessarily be telling an individual story for the moment, but it is telling an overarching story of sameness uh, to to kind of like put you right back in the same space. If that if that makes sense. Ah, I, I, hold on, hold on. I got I got one. I got one. Uh, to tell a story. My favorite. My favorite is when. Anissa showed up. Listen, oh, if you talking about, you, know about you her talk in the comics? Yes. <laughs> oh yes. Yes. I, yes. I know. We'll talk I, about yes. That. And right, yeah. right now, right now, like I think you can call in the prize picks or something and take the over under on whether they're gonna show what happened in the comments. I don't know. Between yeah. Anissa and Mark. I think they will. I don't. I don't, I don't know because because for real, yeah. two point five, two point five stepped it up this back half of the season. They stepped it like if you thought that they went in with Nolan beating the hell out of Mark 2.5, they stepped her all the way up and they told a story. When Anissa showed up, listen, the way she ran through that beast and then flexed and all the blood, it didn't even have time to set in the fabric. Yeah. Like she flexed awesome. and all the, what what kind yeah. of silky shit she got on to, yeah. to be able to do that. And then not only that. When she told Mark, she said, oh, so it's going to be the hard way. And then she commences <laughs> to whoop his monkey ass. And the fact that he was trying to get away, he tried to hit her something. And she said, 
how dare you interrupt your education? <laughs> yes, yeah. that was the best line. How dare when you? When she did. grabs Amber by the throat, was like, uh, you can make a move if you want to, but by the time you get over here, I will rip her to pieces. Yes. Yeah. I liked what you said about the fight scene mimicking his father, which in every other multiverse that we go into, he is an aid to his father. He's a horrible person. He's not the same invincible we get mm -hmm. here. So when we see him go ape shit and kill old boy, like that's part of this narrative that maybe Mark is turning into to Nolan. Mm -hmm. So it's a part of the story. Yeah, but but to that point, that and that's the beauty or the terribleness of the multiverse or whatever. Because if you you look at it, look at the circumstances that Mark has just directly went through. He didn't even get a chance to go use the bathroom. Like he ain't had a chance to make him a peanut butter jelly sandwich. <laughs> he had to deal with Anissa and the whole thing with Amber. Then they broke up, and before you know it, now Angstrom is with his mama, like calls her from the phone, just, and, and, and his and little brother, and his baby, his infant brother, like the disrespect. Like, he's throwing his little he brother around like a rag doll. Hey, I was surprised they took it there. They like, they don't care if it's a baby. He literally threw him. Yeah. I, yeah. And that's why I'm really wondering, I think that they're gonna find a clever way to show, and I'm not gonna spoil it for those who don't know the comics, but, the interactions between Anissa and Mark. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're going to find a, a, a clever way to get it off, but not be as uh, visceral as they're on the comics. I, I think, I they're, think they're, they're going to be as visceral as the comics. Yeah, because the comic care. is kind of, yeah, it, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, it's brutal. Yeah. yeah it's, yeah. it's, it's right. a humbling yeah. moment. And we all, I we can... all like, well, we all <laughs> hold back just like now. Nah. No, nah, I, I can't <laughs> imagine them holding back. It's I a bet you, uh, moment. Kirkman's like, nah, run it. Run I don't it. know. It'll be, I think it'll be a first for mainstream American yep. animation mm -hmm. to do something like that. I mean, you, you, you go overseas, you know, it's, it's a Wednesday yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for them posting yeah. something <laughs> like that. But, but for American, for, for American um, animation, that's a big step. That's yeah. a very big step. Also mm -hmm. with the perspective change too and everything right. like showing that in the american audience that's not really talked about from like that content wise yeah. on like public american side so that's gonna be an interesting i think that i mean like i'm not it, it's very dark but i think it's an important conversation yes because i actually think, uh... know individuals i actually know some people that have had to dealt with similar situations similar so it's not it's not like this thing that's a mythical thing so i know we're i know we're kind of like beating around beating the hell out this poor little bush getting yeah. around it but it's it's, <laughs> it's a very interesting moment it is uh, in, in american and in, in, will will be in american um uh, animation. Well, and especially when you know you're used to the r kelly stories and stuff like this so to see have a reverse type yeah. stitch you know yeah. to have have a different dynamic or whatever, and um, yeah, I, I I can't say anything else without because I feel like I'm going. I'm, yeah, I'm going you about to spoil to it for people that don't know. <laughs> we got <laughs> real, real close. Yeah. I think we almost did it. Going back to the. No. Go, go ahead, go, no, go ahead, Catherine. I'm done. Okay, I'm I'm done. Going back to when you were talking about like the mirroring and movements and like action sequences, the sequence in Atrium Levy has, the, I think it's the mom and the child i don't know he has someone's neck and head together that's the same pose that invincible and the other universe had with ancient levy's son Ooh. same like positioning Ooh. um so that's mirroring as well as even like black eyes towards the end they, they the all had the same on the left their eye yeah. yeah uh roland uh mark and uh and and his mother yeah they all had it yeah Debbie. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah all in the final episode it's so, like <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead, Captain. No, go ahead, finish, Captain. Yeah, it was just like all mirroring. So I'm like, I'm wondering if that's like they all are encountering some form of like similar pain and trauma, like traumatic mm. events, like change, uh, where, um, you know, Invincible is kind of going through a, a big traumatic change. Uh, Noland is like realizing things uh, disrespectfully. <laughs> and then, and then, uh, even um, shoot Debbie in like 
you know having trauma having to see like the house getting destroyed and then coming back and then you know potential changes in her life too so i wonder if it has to do with change and growth or change in their characters yeah i, I, I think what i what i liked about um especially this back half of the series was that they had the cojones to show situations that uh you know are shown in other shows but the way that they dealt with them um like in particular i'm talking about amber um when anissa takes amber pretty much hostage um the thing is we are almost desensitized to it you know you're used to lois lane being in trouble you're used to mary jane is you know the hostage of the damn week you know, and uh, and we understand the other side. We understand why this is why a superhero keeps a secret identity. You know what I'm saying? So that you prevent your loved ones getting hurt. But not only that, so that they're not used as, uh, you know, against you. But to see the way Amber broke down, like it was all very realistic. Like, you know, if you had to, you've made excuses and and were okay with your boyfriend as a superhero he's out saving the world how can i be selfish and be like i want time with my you know with my person just to walk to class or go to dinner or hang out at the in the party on the quad or on campus or whatever so for her to uh completely be like yeah i can't be in your world like yeah i, I get it. it you gotta do what you gotta do i love you boo but uh you know this yeah. chick you held me by the a, throat. Yeah, this you chick held me by the throat. Alien grab you by the throat. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and she barely had to do anything. She just snapped my head completely off my body. You and know. She told and you then, that. and then not only that, like I don't know how it is. Like I know, like if you were dating a girl, and she's like, you know, that guy just smacked my butt. You're like, hey, you smacked my girl's butt, and then he beat your ass down. I think you just <laughs> broke up. You don't know it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you can't even protect me. <laughs> Mark and got a beat down. Like, he didn't even <laughs> confront Anissa for real and got his, he got towed up. Like, even to the point where uh, a CISO number's like, hey, just tell her whatever she wants. You down with her? <laughs> like, you just said, <laughs> don't yeah. let her hit you again my guy. yeah yeah it was it was it was really bad and at that, that mm. moment you could see to see that amber was like oh this is real it was cute when you just had the superhero boyfriend that was invincible and to somebody shows up worse than his father yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that 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 looks just like you at that and she mm -hmm. said she said that she said she said look here you don't come up here and, and face me in like two minutes. I'll be back down here to kill her and everybody else down here. Everybody in here. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's that that new meme that was going around. The new popular <laughs> one for two point five is when is when Anissa has her, has her hand around her throat yeah, and is that yeah. zoom in on her and she says she's it's, it's at this point right here when she realized <laughs> that it wasn't worth it. Yeah. 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 She's it's like, like I'm not built for this. It's <laughs> like I ain't no, nah, it ain't worth this. It ain't worth this. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. I yeah. think she's had, yep. I thought, I think she's an underrated character in this series. I think they did some interesting stuff because I did not like her in season one. I did not like her no, in yeah. season two yeah. at she all. She was but, the heel in season one. But I understood her in season two. I got it. I yeah, was like, I did too. You, yeah, I was like, I feel you, girl. <laughs> I think season one, yeah. season one, they had a writing problem, like an inconsistent, yeah. and that, I think that's what destroyed that part of that character in that season. But mm. when they were crying and she was crying, for, I was like, I get that. Yeah. yeah. I ain't never had a super strong alien grab me up by the <laughs> neck while I'm just sitting there trying to have dinner. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I get it. So it's, I don't even want this chicken I'm, no more. Right. The breast meal ain't that good. Like, yeah. So check them out. About to go uh, vegetarian off this. Yeah. Oh, another uh, thing. Oh, go ahead, Catherine. Another thing about uh, Nissa, the voice actress that plays her, that voices her, she was uh, homeland, the the lady and, and uh, boys that had the, the the boy with Homelander. I forgot that character. Oh, name. oh, the, uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. racist one, the Nazi. No, 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 the, the, no, no, the, the, no, the no. one that had uh, Homelander's uh, son. She, she Homelander's oh, son. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. The name? one that was a uh, uh, yeah, butcher's butcher's, butcher's wife. wife. Yeah, yeah. Butcher's yeah. Wife. yeah. That that that's the voice actress of Anissa. Really, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, okay. so it's just interesting roles reversed. Yeah. Huh. Uh, so in this season, uh, we touch on the multiverse. The multiverse is 
used a lot now in popular country, uh, popular culture. Uh, Chuck, did you think uh, Invincible season two stuck the landing with the multiverse? Or uh, when they the kicked it off, I was like totally confused because I was like, "This is not how season one ended." He wasn't running around with Nolan beating up shit. Yeah, right, right. You know, that's, that's what I was thinking. Like, what am I watching? Did I miss? I, I actually cut it off and put in Invincible. I thought I missed some other short, some other episode, mm. like the the prequel to Adam yeah, Eve's story. Point. I thought I missed something. And I was like, let me just keep watching. Maybe something's going to happen. <laughs> it's gonna clear Because they went like 10 minutes in that whole mm -hmm. world. They're flying around beating up everything. And then they said, oh, it's a different universe. I said, oh, my God, Mark does turn in other universes. And then when Amsterdam Lee said, no, he turns in all of them, but this one. That's why I am here. That's why I chose this one, because this is the one he didn't turn. And this is how I punished all the ones that killed my family and every other one. Yeah, that's completely demented. I, that when, is, that, so when, it, when this, this part of the season started, and I think probably the most hurtful thing that I saw was when you thought he killed Adam and Eve. Oh, but yeah. But he just snapped her neck and paralyzed her because he couldn't kill her. That, that was diabolical. He was like, Eve, don't make me do it. And I was like, is he really going to do this? This is the woman you need to be with. Yeah. This is the no, one. but just think about how diabolical it was. Oh, Nolan yeah. said to him, he said, oh. So that's been what you've been working on. He was practicing that shit. Yeah, yeah. And so, that, that's, that's diabolical. No, I see why he's always holding back. At first I thought, I said, Mark just gets beat up everywhere he goes. But I understand why he was holding back the entire time. Because he's going to turn into one of the versions of him in the in the multiverse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, he was like one step away from that. And then well, he kind of did it in his own universe. Amston Levy took him to the end of his own universe and got killed mm -hmm. like it was plain. But here's the thing, though, like it makes it makes me understand Amston Levy a little bit better because I, I was thinking, like, imagine you grew up during a traumatic time. Imagine you survive Auschwitz. Right. And mm -hmm. you hop into a new universe or not. And Hitler's sitting right there. And every universe he's been to, he has been the Hitler that we know of. But in this universe, you know, he's, he's a allegedly a good person he's and you just got player. done surviving that and your family's already been wiped out and everything that you know has been destroyed. You may not, you know, make the, the, the right decision that you that you think you would. You may <laughs> act like Angstrom Levy. So I can I can. And you're Magneto. Makes, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, it makes it it makes it so that you you get it. You get yeah. why he's doing yeah. what he's yeah. doing. Definitely. Then, Ahead, and, and then compound that because he's getting the memories of all the other multiverses trauma on top of it. So it's not even just one instance. It's every instance. Every, mm -hmm. every instance. Yeah. And, and on top of that, too, this is this show's all about relationships. The whole entire show's a, a drama about relationships. It's not YA. YA. It's way more adult than YA. But mm -hmm. it is, it's, it's about, like, people being in relationships, couples or individual being in relationships over and over again and being hurt in all the relationships finally gets that one good person then they unload all the pain they had and all the trauma they had and all the previous relationships on that person. Like that was your person and you unloaded and, and, and killed them out of your life, basically. <laughs> and that's but what he was... did. Because Amsterdam Levy, he could, Amsterdam Levy could explain to him what he was really thinking. Yeah, I look like this because I didn't because because Mark was trying to trying to trying to tell him like you're not that person. You're not I didn't you you, you didn't want to kill me and I'm sorry this happened to you. I had no idea. And he's like, No, I got all these memories of all the other right. ones that had a bad mark. And no, you are that guy. You it doesn't even guy. matter. You it are that matter. guy. It you doesn't guy. matter. You yeah. are him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you are him. Yeah, hey, that's you killed my that's, that's... son, my wife, all my friends. No, nah, it don't even matter. Yeah, but that's the unfortunate thing about it. You know what I'm saying? And you can you can uh make those kind of uh broad strokes here in, in everyday life. And that's why racism is still rampant as it is, because you might not be the guy that did X, Y, and Z to me, my family, my cousin or whatever, but you look just like him and you know, you, you know, your people or whatever in the hell that they say or whatever. And be like, I'm not him. I'm not them. You know, there is this show 
uh, they should have ended every episode with like a big banner for a uh, mental uh, ther- mental health <laughs> shit because everybody in this shit, I mean, uh, don't even get me started on Donald. Oh, yeah, we even talked about Donald. Yes. Yeah. What? what? Uh, the Immortal and Duplicate? Yep. Yep. Like, like, uh, like shit, even, this show is about relationships. Yeah. About even, relationships. Uh, even ignorant ass uh, uh, Bulletproof uh, um, uh, uh, Rex, uh, Rex, Rexplode. 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 Listen. Yep. Like Rexplode. I didn't know Rexplode actually lived in in, in Adam E's house secretly because he couldn't go to his own personal house. But that explains why he's an asshole. Mm-hmm. Nobody's ever loved him. Nobody's ever loved him but her. And he didn't know how to treat her. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. He didn't know how to treat her. Bullet anyone. to the head for him to figure it out too. <laughs> to the bullet to the head to figure it out. Like oh I uh I imagine, I imagine that help you figure some shit out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe affected his brain for the better. Yeah, <laughs> you know the character I like the most in this. What's that? It was Alan. Alan was my dude. Alan, oh, it's Alan, Alan, the alien. The alien. Alan, yeah. the alien. Alan was out there just doing his thing, just doing my thing, trying to trying to get the get the militia <laughs> together to fight these uh, uh, virtuamites because uh, they they kick everybody's ass. Everybody. And, and <laughs> oh, I, I thought I thought the guy the the, the guy that was reading the. the uh, the the head of the 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 Unopens or whatever you I thought know, he was the, the Prime, traitor. Dude. Oh, I thought yeah. he was the traitor. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I said, like, you just turned down the power on my man. You're the traitor. <laughs> I felt he was the traitor in the very beginning. Like, how did they know I was even here? How yeah. did they know what I just said? I was like, that guy's a traitor. That guy's a traitor. I <laughs> swear he was a traitor. And I was like, oh man. Then he turned him down. And he's like, no, I had to turn you down <laughs> just to make you stronger because I knew yeah. this was gonna happen. If you die. Uh, it would happen. Yeah. Hey, when him. he when he stole on Anissa and she yeah. looked like, how dare you make me bleed my own blood? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. That lets you know she's that one. She's yeah. the one. But he she's he's some luck one. back too. Yeah, but he he him. ate her punches and it didn't faint like he yeah, like she knocked him died. out. Like he he's like well, uh, he yeah. becomes a super strong character yeah. in the comics. Yeah, he went, he went straight I mean, Goku on her. I mean, he's he's already mm-hmm. like stronger than her, like mm-hmm. at this point. But I was I thought it was funny when uh the traitor the 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 when he's like, we ripped his beard off and it's just the mustache. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that was his disguise that he was yeah. in, uh, like, like, he was in the beard. Mind. Yo, it was a clean <laughs> shave too. I was like, yeah. man, I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah, this like, is like, real. A- I'm one. Like but that's part of that. That's stuff. part of that satire. You know what I'm saying? You think about it, like you know, uh, it works for Clark Kent. He puts on a pair of glasses. You have no idea he's Superman. Like <laughs> y'all know how true that really? is, because somebody said something real to me one time. Uh, it was like uh, I think I was at I was working for NeverSoft, and they were doing Tony Hawk. And they were like, nobody knows who Tony Hawk is without his without skateboard. You never know who he is. Yeah, Tony Hawk, no, Tony actually, Hawk was like I've, right next to us about so a skateboard. Do you all remember when Kevin Durant first went to the Golden State Warriors? And mm-hmm. it was a commercial where they're like, Draymond is in the commercial. And they're like, how is anybody going to recognize you, Draymond, with all these MVPs on the team? And it's a guy talking to him. That guy is Horace Grant. We didn't recognize it was Horace Grant without the goggles. Nobody knew who it was until he put on the goggles. And then they were like, oh, damn, that's Horace Grant talking. And I'm like a basketball fan. And it didn't even capture my attention until he put on the goggles. We didn't even, I didn't even know who he was. Yeah. I guess like. Like like, if Sean White cut off all his hair, his red hair, we would never recognize him. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean it's like Dolly yeah. Parton though. Dolly Parton yeah. without the wig. You no one knows what she looks like no without her wig. She looks like without the wig. That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's Dolly that's Parton the... just walking down the street. She's right now in Trader Joe's <laughs> buying some fruit <laughs> and nobody realizes it's Dolly Parton. Mm-hmm. I think it's just a little old white woman in Trader Joe's. <laughs> yeah. Thinking to herself. Cool. I got one more point I want to bring up and uh, then we can mm-hmm. uh re-rate it. So we see Roland appear. Toward in this series, uh, towards the end, did he have an arc or is he kind of the same old Roland? Let anybody jump in there and there. Mm, that's a good I'm question. Trying to remember who Roland was again. He's his father. He's Dad. Mark's father. Nolan. I, Nolan. Nolan. I think, Nolan. Oh, okay. 
I think Nolan to me is probably one of the more fascinating characters because you come out the gates and he's Superman and, and you, you naturally prescribe all the things that's beloved about Superman to him initially. And then he does this crazy out of this world betrayal, a betrayal so heinous that you can't trust him. And then he cements it by beating the brakes off of his son. And then he runs and, and as a bit of a coward, you can't even face his own thing. What he does, you hate him. You hate him. You are Mark. You you are Mark's mom, the pet, you know? Yeah. Uh, but then there's this weird arc, a re weird redemption-ish kind of thing coming. We don't understand it. And I don't think Nolan's character understands it either. I don't think, I don't think his son understands it. And I think all of that is on purpose. And I think sometimes human beings, when we do human things, um, we there isn't like this clear cut way to ask forgiveness or to find redemption. We watch a lot of TVs and movies and it's this clean, easy thing. You know, it's summed up in 90 minutes. Well, a lot of time redemption takes years, mm -hmm. years for you to gradually mm -hmm. gain somebody's trust. And you even can kind you of do see, get it again. Yeah, e yeah, even if yeah, and, and you may not even get it. And this is one of the few times where I've seen a character where you can see him actively struggling and maybe even trying and there's a part of me that wants to root for him even though i know he is this despicable human being mm -hmm. so i think i think that's pretty interesting for me here's here's what the way i um saw nolan's arc we've seen it in so many movies and tv shows uh because it's hard to imagine you know like you said he's superman he's got all these powers um but he's, you know, almost like the immortal, like he lives like forever type. We see it in like vampires and elves, you know, and depending on what fantasy world you rock with. And a lot of times when the, you know, good vampires or the good elves or whatever, when they talk about why they don't really fool with humans like that, they say, you know, because everyone you love or everyone dies off. And I don't want to mm -hmm. deal with that because I don't want to put all this emotion and time into this person. And then I'm going to look the same in 80 years and they're going to be on their deathbed. And you never know that that's my kid or whatever. But I think with Nolan in this was we actually got to see his breakdown in him trying to cope and trying to deal with what the hell is that, this I'm feeling like he got sent to Earth on a mission. You know, that was part of he was in the CIA. He came down to lie. You know what I'm saying? Found him a, a pet because as far as he concerned, the humans didn't have any real, they were just another mission. It was another planet to conquer like he's conquered so many before. I mean, you got to think about when the Vilchmarsh rolled up, they didn't send one Anissa after him. They sent a squad because he was that guy. Nolan was him a thief. He was the guy and all of them revered Nolan. Mm -hmm. And that's why they were almost hurt. They felt betrayed by Nolan's like, mm. you went native? Yeah. My mm. guy, like, mm. yeah. you are not, the one. Like, we were looking dad. to you. You were the one who was <laughs> in line to be our next emperor. You yeah. were that guy. And not just once he went native. He went twice. Yeah. Twice. twice. And he Even when he was it. fighting the dudes, uh, yeah. he was like, they didn't, tell, <laughs> they didn't tell you about me. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. they let you know who I was, son. Yeah, you know about yeah. the witness. Yeah, he said you better check my resume. Right. They did that Dragon Ball fight in the cave to protect yeah. his sons. I was like, wow, yeah. this is Ooh. that fight. But this is but but you believe him when he when he loves Mark. Like I believe yeah. that he loves Mark. Yeah. Yeah, I think even though he's a, he's a terrible person, I believe him. Yeah. And, and then but then but then he also you know even though he's this horrible person, he gave Mark some terrible advice that was sound. He was like, if you don't fight to kill, you are going to die. Die. Yep. You know, like yeah. let's let's separate this thing. Like I know I'm a terrible thing, but we're not having a human moment right now. We're having a Viltrumite moment, and I need you to fight to kill. Right. And Vilt he's right want in all that, that, that smoke. Yeah, they yeah. want all that yeah. smoke. Mm -hmm. I mean, Vil Viltrumites are pretty much the space Mongolians. They, they are, man. They are. Okay. Yeah. They, are. they are. I thought I thought it was really interesting. I think Nolan had a good arc, though. I really did think he had a a really good arc, and it's still growing. But you can't say his arc without Debbie's arc. Like Debbie is the epitome of love. Mm -hmm. Man, she took that baby he had with an insect, that purple ass baby, and and treated like her son. And she said to the, she said to Cecil, "I raised Mark the way he is. I did it by myself. 
his father was gallivanting saving the world until he wasn't mm -hmm. and asked his son to not save the world with him and his son stood by his side i made that happen i am her yeah. mm -hmm. and i and would told do the that same to the with this yeah. baby she told it to yeah. the Cecil. And, yeah. and i'm gonna yeah. take this damn purple half insect captain kirk ass baby <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and make it and raise him like he's yeah. my son and she's the and only she was, one in the multiverse yep. who's raised a decent mark yeah yes yeah, she's the only one yeah. in the multiverse raised a decent mark yep and that's just but that's, true but that, but, yeah, but that also true. that also goes to show like if, if you saw in the other uh multiverse he went in we didn't see any signs of Debbie yeah, anywhere. But they did. Dead. They did mention, like in the, I guess uh, the, uh, Antrim mentioned that the Debbies in the other universes went bad and followed. Went bad. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. If, with it, I don't know if that's a different change in the comics. I wasn't sure in the comics that, that she existed or if it's if it was similar. So they might have killed Debbie, or she went bad. She went. Mm -hmm. rogue. They mentioned she went bad. I don't yeah. know if they killed her in some, but they may have in some other. Yeah, ones. yeah, but Mark was. Definitely him. Improved. Yeah, well, I'm definitely. sure that, you know, as many multiverses there are, I'm sure there's some, she went bad, she died or whatever. And, but anyway, it went, there was always Nolan who ended up raising Mark to be mm -hmm. just like him, except for this world. This one. So. This one. And Mark is fighting it tooth and nail. He's trying. Yeah. He's so trying right, to let's fight rewrite it. this thing. We're going to start with you, Sintel. Uh, oh, how you going to rewrite it? Uh, I, I started with it being bitch worthy. I'm going to end with it being, being bitch worthy. Um, I, I always love this part because you all give me a little bit more to even think about, to either strengthen or, or lessen my argument. And it was nothing but strengthening going on on here. I would absolutely recommend this and tell people to be patient uh, regarding them getting this project out. If you want quality, sometimes you got to wait for it. Uh, Miss Catherine, what about you, ma'am? How are you going to rewrite it? I'm gonna keep the rating. It was uh, you no know, this 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 season was intense, and like some of episodes had me on the edge of my seat, like. Just very shocking in a in fascinating and good way. So you keep so it the same. It, no, sorry. You keeping it at a full meal? Uh binge worthy. Oh, binge, binge worthy. worthy. Okay. Mm -hmm. binge worthy. All right, Chuck, what about you, good sir? How you gonna how you gonna rewrite? Uh realizing these episodes are fifty two minutes, and I didn't re realize that when I was watching <laughs> it. And I did it from like two PM on Sunday and I finished around eleven. Uh, I'm gonna say it's a binge worthy. Uh I'm gonna move my rating up. Initially, I thought Mark was an asshole and I didn't like him and I was fed up with him. Like, damn it, why are you always bitching and crying? <laughs> Get your shit together. Leave Ember alone. Leave Ember alone and get with Adam Eve. She's a superhero and she's badass. Yeah. That's what you should have been doing. Mm -hmm. Mess with this human that was horrible in the first season. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but but I thought I was like, get your you shit together. Leave them yams back. Alone. You couldn't leave them yams. You letting all the, you letting all these aliens die out here, these insect aliens. You know they only live a year anyway. <laughs> what the hell's hey, wrong with you? Uh, Mark did clap them cheeks though. He did he did clap them cheeks in this yeah. uh this series. He uh yeah. you know yeah he, yeah he had sex with Amber for the first time. Yeah, that did, his best so. friend had to call him out. I thought his best friend story was good. <laughs> Wait, yeah, surprisingly, yeah, yeah, it was good. Which best friend story, sorry? Uh, Mark's best friend. What's his name? The 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 little gay dude. Oh yeah. Who was who was uh going with the guy yeah. who got kidnapped? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna jump in here too. Uh, this mm -hmm. conversation was really good. Uh, y'all convinced me to take it up a notch. Uh, you know, at first I thought it was just really, really good. Didn't think it quite reached that binge worthy milestone. But after this conversation, uh, y'all convinced me. Uh, I'm gonna take mine up to a full uh, binge worthy too. And in the chat, we got Mark and Dark Namja. They they put it as a binge worthy as well. So mm -hmm. you know, all across the board, fives. Yeah. We got it's binge worthy. So it's a full Viltrumite mustache. <laughs> right, right. Now Viltrumite mustache. Yeah. Right, you didn't ask me. Yes. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Rakan. Oh, oh, hey, hey, don't piss Rakan. He'll rip his beard off. <laughs> I'm gonna vote your mic. I'm giving. I'm giving it a cringe word. <laughs> Mr. Steed, how did you? How how are you going to rewrite it? Um. When I think about things that are binge worthy, I think about, you know, will I tell other people about them? Do would I rewatch this? Um, and Chuck is is right too. I didn't realize that these episodes were 52 minutes. I had you know, I thought they were half an hour. Um 
Yeah, of course we want more. When you're given quality, of course you want more and you want it now. And it takes time. We've seen with the whole, uh, you know, fiasco that's going on with MAPA, um, you know, you want your Jujutsu Kaisen, you want your, you know, all these other projects that are quality, you want them now. And they're rolling out stuff to us. You're like, damn, that was great. And they're like, bruh, that was 30% of what we even had planned for y'all. And you're like, for real? I don't even want my mind blown up. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, you know, and they took their time with this. And I can see it. I don't know what it would have been like if they gave it to us earlier, but they took their time and I loved every damn second of it. Um, and just to have a little bit of knowledge about what is coming the arcs for some of the people that's coming your allens your nissas your nolans your you know your mark um we are in for a ride if they can keep giving us quality and maybe find a way to get to us a little bit faster than two and a half three years yeah this is most definitely most definitely a binge worthy for me so i'm staying all right there we go across the board Invincible season two, we are giving it a full binge out. All right, Chuck, got anything to say before we head out, sir? Nah, just tell the people to subscribe, like, share, tell tell your friends to join us, and that's it, really. And all that you good can find stuff. me at Charles Bab at everything except OnlyFans, not yet. I was wondering, was he gonna say? Uh, that? I said oh. except. I said except that one. Don't Everything matter. else, you I'm just on. said it into the universe, and we get to bad imagery. That's it. <laughs> I, I, I may be showing foot feet photos. What are you talking about? I, I don't got, care. I got nice matter. feet. You're going to be Catherine. Uh, button neck. You're going to be button neck at watching Fast and Furious cars. Oh. Yeah. I, oh, Catherine, please. Oh. Uh, you got anything to say before we head out, ma'am? Oh, God. I just did not need well, that in my yeah. life. I didn't need that neither. <laughs> well, yeah. I hope you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Catherine, that I called you. You have to follow that up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're good. I hope you have a good remainder of your uh, good Odin's Day and happy Thor's Day. I'm just going to keep it with the Greek mythology. Uh, and you can follow me at GoCatCreate on across the board and or CreatureStudio.io. So happy yeah. Thor's Day. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep it Greek mythology too, Catherine. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh we're <laughs> What you got anything to say before we head uh, out? Man, that's worse than going medieval. <laughs> <I know. laughs> I got vomit now. I got it. Ugh. Um. Anyway, I think I want to do something different. Um. It's you know it's you guys know where you can find me, Nuke from the Ville. Um, I want to give a shout out. Uh, we have been doing uh, binge worthy now for several years, and I am fortunate to be a a new uh, team member. Been around for a couple years now. Um, I am so thankful for the OG uh, Centel. So thankful for you know our our illustrious founder OG uh, Chuck, our, our showrunner, and and OG uh, Mr. Randolph, our OG. Our, and our technical director in the background, uh, Rodney, um, Catherine, and uh, Courtney, who's not with us tonight. Um, we had a great show a couple weeks ago, um, and we did some some pretty nice numbers on uh, when we did Three Body Problem. Um, and I think, uh, I, you know, me personally, I think every show is great, but I thought tonight was a really great show. Mm -hmm. And we just want to see more people share, uh, more people subscribe, and we're looking to go up and bigger and better in uh, two, 2024. So just whatever it takes for us to get there, you guys help us. We appreciate you in the chat um, and just appreciate the the big things that are on the horizon. You know, like I said, you can catch me all social media, my YouTube, Patreon, Nuke from the Bill. Yep. And if you see that thumbs in your chat or that like, hit like, that's how we get spread across the internet. So Mark and Dark Namja, could you like us, please? Yeah. And, make, make a slight correction it was uh norse mythology not greek mythology norse yeah. yes that's all i'm keeping it norse too <laughs> mm -mm. sit tell let the people know mm -mm. where they can find you at and tell them about your channel good sir uh i'm sorry i'm trying to 
trying to stomach I know, Chuck right I know. now. I'm trying to keep it on my, my thoughts, too. <laughs> I don't know why y'all hate. Y'all have so much hate in y'all. Just accept these quips. Oh, my gosh. Listen, uh, yo, come see, come see your boy, Sintel, about YouTube, uh, youtube.com forward slash Sintel. And also, there's an international channel as well uh, where we do reaction deep dives uh, regarding some of this this stuff that we just love. We love the medium, be it animation, television, movies. Uh, I, I kind of wanted to second what, what Rakai was saying. Hey, for those... Uh, that are watching this on the restream, on the retelling, please, 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 by all means, you know, if you know somebody that just loves this conversation, please share. It, it, sharing goes a very long way. I know it can be so tired. Be like, hit the like button and the subscribe button, but it, it does carry real weight. And especially uh, with sharing, it, it means a whole lot to us. And it's a great way to say thank you. Um, and we appreciate um, the, that, the fact that you, you guys are spending this time. Uh, that's it. Uh, thank you all for having me. Uh, letting excuse me having me letting me be uh, a part of this conversation and getting a chance to play in y'all sandbox tons of fun appreciate it <laughs> you know you're always welcome bro shout out to digital click they are our marketing and advertising partners if you are considering any marketing or promotional needs for your organization then please reach out to digital click Shouts out to Rodney, our technical director. He's the best technical director on the internet. You know, he handles all the transitions and putting up the graphics and all the changes. Just a really, really dope guy. So everybody said pretty much what I was going to say. You know, hit those like buttons. Follow us on all our platforms. You know, blow our stuff up because we are <laughs> worth it. We've got amazing people in front of the camera, behind the camera. So please support us because we are making fascinating content for people look just like you and next week we're going to do fallout so you know uh it's, oh. it, it's dropping which, so, which is yeah, out right it's now out yeah. right, right now, now. Yeah. what tonight it's it dropped out. tonight yes. and they dropped all, right, all the episodes it's already out. Yep, yeah. all the episodes dropped. So you know we're gonna uh, we're gonna yeah. review that. No, so I'm come back this. here next week, <laughs> same yeah. geek time, same geek channel, uh, to figure out how we fell out, how we felt about Fallout. Until then, Benji's. Talk to you guys later. Peace.